Well, this is how I do a reproduction rainbow trout. You can see how narrow this fish head is. It's kind of long and narrow. Uh, the length is right, but the head is uh, too narrow and skinny for his liking. Basically what I did was I got a sawzall. This thing right here, I cut halfway down, just right behind the gills. I cut down to where the center of the gill is, where the center of the gill stops. And then I cut up from underneath, following the gill, the gill rakers. And uh, that's how I got what I got here. This is actually a better representation of what his head was like. It's the same length and thickness. It's just a different head altogether. It's just, you know, trout are like people. They can be different. So we're going to get that where it looks as natural as possible. What I'm doing now is I want to stick some Bondo down in there. And I have this wire sticking out so far, kind of like for support. And then we're going to Bondo this head on. We're just going to jab into there. About right in here, something like this. And I might think of debating about putting one underneath too. So we can uh, get it on there like how we think we need to get it. And uh, what I'll do is I'll stick some Bondo down in there. Lay this in there, let it set. And then maybe even put more Bondo around it. And then... Uh, We'll have it set up to where it'll stick in there and at least hold in place while I secure it real good with glue or whatever or Bondo or whatever I use. And uh, then we'll take it from there. I've got a little Bondo and my hardener. I'm just mixing them up. Let's stick some hardener down in there. It's still got a while before it gets hard, it looks like. Which is good. That means you got time to work with it. I'm just going to put it all in there. Let it go down in there. I'll put every bit of it down in there. Looks like we're pretty close as far as what's good enough. Uh, we got a wire stick down in there where we know we want it. And then I'm going to hold this until it gets dry. I'm thinking I'll probably put a little in here for the bottom. Try to keep it on the inside. Okay, while well, it's still relatively fresh, put it on there and uh, let it do what it's got to do. I'm going to go past this. That's a spin. Yeah. The mask can take to kind of bridge the bondo from going to where it don't need to go. So I'm going to go right there with it. That's actually going to help. So that is a pretty good way to do it right there. A little bit of a uh, more bondo. I got masking tape to keep it from like spilling out on the other side. Bondo. Should be able to let it drop down in there. Should be able to go pretty good where it's got to go. At least that's what I'm hoping. Whoops. This is the back side. It's going down pretty good. Now, the good thing is, is this is kind of runny right now. So I'm thinking I should be able to pick him up and tip him the way I want the Bondo to go. It's 
pick it up, see if I can tip him around, get it to go where it needs to go, or where I want it to go anyway. Hmm. A dribble tool. I, I like using the big, the small drill bit. One of the smallest ones you can get that will fit in the dribble tool. One eighth inch drill bit. So I'm going to turn it in and uh, what I'm doing is getting rid of the plastic. Don't take much. He's doing that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this fan here real quick, and you assume that you do all the fins that way. Right, right here, the gaps in between uh, that needs to be got. Right up here at top, all that needs to be got. You might want to use it for
Hey, here's the pins. Uh, you know, some of them, the newer ones, they got like plastic pins and all that that are real good. This is a little bit old school, you know, with a fiberglass pin. Cut them out and you can save a lot of your adrenaline by just cutting. With a good pair of shears and really save on a lot of dremeling actually. So, just by cutting around, don't have to grind, I guess is the right word, and all that flashing. Sometimes I'll leave a little bit of that for help, you know, as far as getting it to go in a slot or something. I'll kind of make a slot and, you know, stick some Bondo down in there and Bondo is really good. I got me a little slot even. That yeah, works out pretty good that way. You just like stick it in there and mesh it up real good. And uh, I'm going to grind it the way the pin needs to go. Um, the pin juncture will tell okay you how it needs to go. Yeah, a lot of times, uh, like this, um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, trout are good for having those bottom pins that go like this. Well, pretty much almost flat. Then you can use a dremel tool and touch them up on the ends, and it's a lot less work. Go ahead and cut all this off. Got a little bit of a something sticking out to help with the bond going. You know. Fit right in there and kind of secure everything. Okay, right here I've got a little bit of a fin here, and well, like right here. See the edges with a little bit of flashing left? Uh, you can see that. And uh, we just. juncture areas, I'm making slots. <laughs> but Bondo might be your best bet. Some of there without being too messy, uh, you just said they're done. But okay, then I'm gonna put some on the end of this fin here on both sides. In there, uh, I've already pre fitted it, I know it'll fit. I'll put that right there, and I'll go ahead and put one in down here too. The bottom one's holding them by itself. Okay, now right down here, uh, put a little lake, uh, put a little latex top on there, uh, smoothing around these junction areas, make them look good. Up under the throat, you know, smooth that, make it look pretty good. Okay, next thing we're going to do, uh, basically, I'm going to use top for everything else. Here's a little bit of a gap here, and I'm going to smoothen that out with top up here on the back. Down here, I'll make all this look natural with caulk. A little bit of Bondo sticking out. I may take some of that off. Uh, but other than that, caulk here. Uh, the underneath is going to be caulk. 
here on the back side there's a little bit of a spot and it's going to be caught. I'm going to put the eyes in. I'm going to use caulk for that too. Okay, now I've got these Wayne Cooper eyes. And uh, that's a pretty good spot. I'm going to, have to probably have to dribble it out a little bit. But as you can see, they kind of just fit in. Which is pretty cool. I'll put a little bit of caulk behind it. And go around it. And that guy... It's going to be about done. Here, I'll probably drum all that off. A little bit of Bondo sticking up. But that won't take long. Um, smooth them junction areas down. Put a little bit of caulk over it and uh, caulking the rest of the way and then put a paint job on it after the caulk dries real good. Okay, I've got a little caulk here. You can see some uneven places up here at the top. So. Um, make sure I... I'm going to go down to where um, where I know the back stalks and the gills begin. That's where I'm going to go on both sides. Where the back stalks and the, the gills on the side begin. Wetness on my finger. Um, start spreading that stuff out. Water is the key. You got to keep things wet, or, or that uh, caulking's gonna not go where you want it to go. Keep your fingers wet, and all should be okay. Fitting real good. Smooth transition. You feel like you might need to do like around the fin junction areas. Got these Wayne Cooper flex eyes. Um. Yeah, sometimes they, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's a little blurry, but I'll cut the corners off for a better fit. Sometimes it's, they, they don't fit in the hole just right. The Wayne Cooper eyes, they're made to actually, you can put them in the fish before the fish dries. And then the skin just, uh, you know, dries around the eye. So I think that's kind of what they're made for. Kind of like the flex eyes for the ducks and everything. Um, and you put them on like Suji mounting and all that. But taking a little bit of this off the corners. Oh, one of them fits, one of them almost fits. Uh, so it's real close. So it don't take much. Just a little bit off these corners here. And we'll be in good shape. That's a good fit. A little bit of caulk and then I'll put some around around the eye also I could have dremeled now on this one I'm just facing like towards the upper point of the nose up on top that's kind of working out pretty good for me and that looks pretty good just like that what I'll do is I'll get a little bit of caulk um, and go right Right around where the gap is. Because I know I need to put some in there. I will wet the caulk, but I'm probably going to go ahead and put the speed around the eye first before I wet it. I'll use my finger now, get it wet, wet it drip down on both sides, let it cover that caulk a little bit, that water. Then I'll work on smoothing some of these corners out. Make sure our moisture gets on there. Now, 
Probably get a wet Q-tip. Whatever system works out best for you. Sometimes it'll spray it right on. Cleans the aisles pretty good, just like that. And the Q-tip will help feel like uh, if you need to take a little more off around the eye. Close. Somebody just shot outside. There it goes again. Probably shooting at a deer. It is deer season. Okay, and uh, show you what we do next. Talking work to do on this. A lot of people use epoxy sculpt. I do too sometimes. You know. You know, for big things that I gotta fix or something. But when I get in here, had a little bit of a gapage right there, down here where this fin juncture comes in. I'm trying to fix that. Okay, I just whipped a little bit on my little uh, piece of cardboard here. Let me say it looks pretty good. Um, that's going to be good enough for me as far as right there. But we got more fins to do. I'll show you that. I'm going to fix this up a little bit better. Kind of get the idea though. Put a little water on the Q-tip. Let that kind of saturate a little bit. Or you can even throw a little on there to help you out. Let that saturate in there, you know. And get where it does where it's gotta go. I'm going to fight with it here a little bit. Here on the bottom, got a little extra bondo here. I just want to cover it. That's all I want to do. Cover the bondo, not the, the fin rays. Just the places where the bondo is. I just want to get that taken care of. And let's see, right here, it looks like we might need a little bit of help. I got like a popsicle stick. Might be you're just a with this right here, and then I can make sure I'm in the way of it. Basically, spread this out.
and we'll come here, fix that up a little bit better. Finger again for these right here. Make that look natural. We'll maybe straighten some of this stuff up here where it looks natural, not so bad. Okay, right here where the gills are. If I can make that look natural, that's great. There you are. There. That looked pretty good. Just using a little piece of cardboard here to manicure this stuff up a little bit. I'm not worried if a little of the bondo shows through as long as it's a smooth transition. You know, so a little bondo don't bother me. Here we are. You know, the Q-tips and the pieces of cardboard, those are all like little tools to get your talking where it needs to be. That looks pretty good. The other side already looked good. Mess with a little bit right there. Let me get some on there. It hurts on the finger. There we are. We'll let him dry. You pretty much uh, you can go back and work on him a little bit extra, you know, over the next few days. But give him a good while to dry real good, you know, three or four days or something like that, at least. And let him dry real good. Then use a, I like to use sand and sealer for, for a base coat or a base coat sealer is good. Uh, and then just put you a good rainbow trout paint job on it, which is what I'm going to do. Got some more Bondo. Got a Q-tip. And what we want to do is put teeth on this guy. So, I'm going to be quick with it. There's not going to be nothing elaborate. Uh, I have used like latex carb before, but it is a lot softer. It is. Right down here, the bottom ones real quick. Put some on the bottom. You just want to push down and go straight up, and that makes a tooth. And it works for me. You can see visible teeth. So that's what you do. Okay, now that we got the teeth in, let him dry real good. Put your favorite sealer that you want to use, a sand and sealer or base coat sealer, something to seal the fish up, and then you put your paint job on it. Now we're going to paint a rainbow trout, in this case, three at once. Seal the fish with a base coat sealer. It'd probably be easier uh, if you have the stick by hand and you know just spray it real good. You get it however you need to get it.
a couple of trout that are already painted white. And so we're going to do three at once. Having on a stitch is so much easier. You get under the belly, in the jaw, side of the face. Thin. You don't have to sit there and worry about moving and tightening and loosening bolts and all that stuff. It's good for getting inside the gills too. It's priceless for getting inside the gills. You can get the top of the back real good. A lot pearl. And pearl the whole fish, make it real good and pearly. And you can hold it too, just like, you know, before. Like with the white. Go ahead and hold it by the stick and you can get every part of it real fast. Pearl going on there real good. Make sure you got a good coat of pearl on your fish. I guess you can put it on too strong, but uh, just make sure you see it. You want to make sure you see it. That's the purpose of putting it on. Some wax the finger on a Q-tip, and you might want to roll it just once to get out the excess wetness. In other words, you want to clean it off, but you don't want it to drip. So a lot of times I'll just get, uh, get a Q-tip with a lacquer thinner and uh, clean my eye off. I go ahead and clean my eye off pretty much from the get-go at least. With the darker colors, it's not going to show up that much, you know, later on. I also use an X-Acto knife, something like this, to uh, trim or as close as you can get, you know, you know, to get all the paint off. They work really good. Silver metallic. And, uh, you can see it on rainbow trout. You see that little bit of silver around the... Where it's a little bit darker sometimes, like there's a transition area between the, I guess the, the lower belly, or the, the belly and the lower side. Like right in there, right above the pelvis and pecs. You'll see it. And so it's not wrong to kind of incorporate that. About a, about a medium to light coat. And if you go too dark with it, you can always go over with like silver pearl or something to lighten it back up. You also go along the back. Um, I would turn it or even hold it with my hand to do it, but for video purposes, I'm just going to do it like this. You want to fade out by the lateral line. <clears throat> Got like a medium coat. Sure you fade it the lateral line. You'll be completely faded out by the time you get to the lateral line. With all fish, I tend to like go around just the very bottom of the eye. Then I work my way up to stay kind of like up on top of the gill flap a little bit. And then I come down just to here. And uh, it's kind of like the way I do all my, all my fish as far as when I paint the back. So you want to be completely faded out by the time we get to the ladder line. All these fish are, are a little bit dark on the face anyway, so I don't care to put a little bit of metallic on there. And anything you do you don't like, you can always correct it later. That's for sure. Same thing on this side. I see that little dark area, kind of abrupt. Uh, you know, it's on the side of the fish. Goes all the way to the tail, but it's like that area right above the, the pecs and uh, right above the pecs and uh, pectorals, or the I guess you could say the upper part of the belly, and just kind of fade out by the time you get to the ladder line. Even if you cover the ladder line, it's no big deal. 
Uh, I think the main thing we're looking at is, uh, you know, a good reflective base. But you do see that darkness, and silver metallic uh, replicates that little bit of darkness on the side of the fish. The same thing here. Like pretty much on all my fish, is, you know, I may uh, go around the eye a little bit, and then I work my way up relatively quick, and then I may come down a little bit where the gill flap and the cheek get, uh, uh, separate a little bit right here up at the top, and then maybe a little bit down in there. Then I work my way up along the top of the back. This coating, when it's faded out, by the time you get to the ladder line. Maybe a little bit above if you don't want the, if you don't want it in your stripe. Probably good to stay above this stripe. Maybe a half. Of course, the belly, make sure it's good. Yeah, it's dark enough already. Okay. Now, you can stop where you think your stripe's going to be. If you got one more fish to paint with this silver metallic, and then we'll go to our next color. Yellow ochre. And uh, I like to start on the dip of the nose. Then you work them out. This is a medium coat, you know, going around the eye a little bit. You can go ahead and mist on it. And uh, you can go along the back. This color, I like to go all the way down to where the stripe is, or, or is going to be, pretty much cover all my silver metallic. Not completely, you know, you want it to be shiny still. But what I'm getting at is, say our next color is medium green, and I don't, I don't want the medium green to cover up all the yellow, so it's going to, it's a, uh, Especially as you get closer to the to the stripe, the, uh, the, the pinkish red stripe on the side. I definitely want right above that pinkish red stripe. I want to be able to see some of that yellow. So most of the green is going to be on the back and then fade as you go down the side. But also in my reference pictures, I've seen a little bit of green down here even. So pretty, uh, also yellow. So we're going to incorporate that stuff in too. Because you're on top, you don't want to kill out all that pearl, which you can do. And then, uh, definitely want it to show when you go all the way down to the, where the ladder line is going to be. Or even a little above it would be fine. If you want to shut off right just slightly above it, maybe three to a half inch, depending on the size of the fish. Okay, still got my yellow ochre. I like to go a little bit right in here because I see it. Right there where that silver metallic is. We're going to put violet on there a little bit later. A lot missing a violet, but it never covers up yellow, so they go good together. a little bit on the lower jaw. If you would be able to barely see it on the lower, lower end, uh, just don't go into the belly and keep from it. Get a little bit of yellow down there where the black's going to go uh, later. Around the bottom part in here, just slightly, ever really lightly. Then get it. Got a medium coat. Well, these are opaque colors that we're putting on the back with the uh, medium green and uh, And the yellow ochre, they're both pretty okay. They can, in other words, they can cover up. So just be careful. 
You will see where that pearl comes in if you can keep it. Feel free to card the pen if you need to. You want to put some up like this if you need to, to get your pens painted. Pink stripe usually tapers out right here towards the top. I wouldn't say always, but I know it does a lot. And uh, main thing is get that yellow right up on top, head here on top, through here like a white coat. You want to see it though. You want to see it because it's there. And of course, all the pins. We'll go ahead and get these other fish and I'll show you what we got. Got the yellow ochre again. And towards the bottom where the black is, I'll put it maybe just a hair on the maxillary. But where the black is going to go later, like not right up in here or right in there, or right down here on the bottom. Slightly, about as light as what you put on the bottom part of the, the side there, below the stripe. About that much intensity. Just a little bit of yellow. I mean, you barely even know it's there. In fact, when it goes over that silver metallic, it almost seems like it has a greenish kind of hue to it anyway. they are pretty much the colors that's going to show on your fish when it's done. Because really all we got is the medium green and, and the red stripe and, and, and putting a little bit of red on the fins. And you're done. So you got to make sure that you kind of pretty much want everything where it is. We're going to put a little bit of violet on it too, but what I'm getting at is make sure everything is kind of like how you want it as far as tone and how strong the color is. If you had to lighten your fish up, you still could by just putting, you know, some white, maybe a little white pearl back over it. And make sure it's, you know, how you think it needs to be before you go further. And reference pictures are a good thing to look at. And if it's easier for you, do the sides first before you do the back. That way you'll know your intensity is right. Got my medium green. I already put some on my fins. I don't want to kill the yellow. I know it's very hard to do. But you want the green to show. But you also want the yellow to show a little bit. So my remedy for that is start off dark, dark right up on top and then just basically almost tint the yellow. When you get down to the lighter one. Top of the head. I guess anyone you see yellow, you can put a little hint in the green because it shows. I even got my green thinned down as a safety measure so I don't. And I remember we got black going over this too, so. You can see that green. I use a little bit in the lower section. You can barely even tell it. I notice on this one, I got the intensity uh, right along the back. And it kind of fades out a little bit below. The medium green. As far as the fins are concerned, it only goes on the dorsal and the tail and the adipose. I see some reference where it looks like it goes around the eye a little bit, but it goes pretty much straight up top. So you go kind of like right to the eye and stay above the, kind of come up here, stay above the cheek and then above the heel flap. And straight up on top of the back is where your thickest stuff is. And then as you graduate down the side, I like to let the yellow show through a little bit. Here I've got my medium green again. I'm 
when you get to the hint of it, right down here below, basically make, getting a little hint of the yellow. This green. I like to do right in here, I've seen the references. It's a little blushing in it. Right here where it's going to get dark, don't want to kill the yellow out, then just the adipose, dorsal, and the tail get the green. And even then, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. And you still want to look a little bit yellowish, I guess, is the right word. So I guess, I guess you'd say we're toning the yellow. So there's a little bit of green to show you. I'm going to stay right up on top. You just got to make a conscientious commitment to have control over your head. As far as the side, is that right there as far as I want to go? You stay up on top. sitting on top of the, the gill and cheek area. I can see where they uh, kind of intersect a little bit. Like and then do the same to the other side. I'm stronger up on top. And I'm on the rear strap and I went ahead and made a faint line right down the middle of the lateral line. It pretty much takes an even amount of space, like above and below the lateral line, but it starts off like real narrow here on the... Yeah, it takes a lot of control with your airbrush. I mean, you can't be moving around much. And whatever you take above, you gotta take below. In other words, it's evenly spaced. above as it is below. So you want it you want it to phase out and become lighter. About like that. And uh, whatever you do below you gotta do above. You know as far as intensity. Now the far as the thickest part of it be about right in here. You know, you can make a stripe too thick, you know, you gotta... And I'm staggering, uh, staggering, I'm not making it like super perfect. Now we're going to work on the cheek area. As you can see by my reference pictures, they vary quite a bit in intensity. So, let me see, it looks like some of them pretty much from behind the eye. Well, here's what I've got so far, and they all vary a little bit. I mean, they're all not exactly the same. You know, as far as where the red's exactly at, intensity, and so forth. Now we're gonna put a little bit of red, more so on these bottom pins. 
You don't want to kill the yellow out completely, but you definitely... And feel free to card your fins. Use good reference of your fish to get the intensity you want for your fins. Also. Card your fins. This way. You know when you get the color about right the way you want it. And it'll just kind of pop, I guess is the right word. Just a hint on the tail. There's no mistake that you can make, really, that you can't fix. There's, there's one good way to look at it. You'll get that real pretty orangey type look to it, uh, depending on how much yellow you put, too. You just let the color kind of grow on, and you just be mindfully aware of how much is uh, going on. We do all your fins that way, top, bottom, front and back. Now what I like doing while I got this red, I want to really mist it, but pretty much Everywhere I've got yellow, I want to off the color just a little bit. The pins a little. Just kind of change the value of the color a little bit. Mainly up on top. Put on light enough, I guess you could say it works about like the way gold toner would work. I'm going to play a little catch up with the other two fish and I'll show you what we've got and then I'll show you what we do next. Well, if you got any gills on your fish, go ahead and Well, here's what we've got so far, and I'll show you what we do next. Now, I do see this in the Tim Sun paint schedules, but I definitely see it on, especially in the in the body part, and that's a little bit of the blue going around the red. I've got a uh, shimmering blue, and I'm hoping it's. Uh, where it's noticeable. There it goes. And basically I just I'm go around my strap, go above it. and around the cheeks. Okay, now I've got some shimmering violet. 
I want to put it on wide. And I can see it. Mainly below the strap. Either that or you can put like a vague little bit of on it. Right here on the very edge. Right now is a good time for touching up anywhere you might have accidentally, you know, from painting your fins. You may have accidentally got a little bit of something on your belly. You can uh, go ahead and light it out now. And I sure did. I wiped up where I did some damage or where I had a little paint on my belly. And what I'm going to do is go around pretty much like I do with all the crowds. And if you're a little messy with it, don't worry about it because we're going to angle spray a little bit later. And you know, what that's going to do is going to it's going to make shade of that where it looks pretty good. Trace over the grooves in your gill rakers. Something like that. You can even trace this outer edge right here, but I'm probably not going to do it. I'm going to leave well enough alone on that thing. Well, when you get caught up on the other fish, and I'll show you what we do next. Cross it a little bit in front of the eye. And a little bit behind the eye. And if, if there's a lot of overspray, don't let it bother you. You can even line the teeth up right now, I guess. You know, you just... Now I put spots on the head of the fish, and I would use reference. Uh, if you got reference material that shows, you know, how many they got on top, and how much they got on the side of the head, that would be great. This takes a steady hand. Now they're like dots on the face. Towards the body, they start breaking up and doing weird things. But I'll get the top of the head and we'll see what we've got.
And what I'm doing is I'm getting the spotting on the fins, uh, uh, spotting on the back first. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about propping my fish up on its side later. Now we do all our bottom pins this way. We, we, I put a row of spots all the way to the bottom, just above the white. You could have went all the way down and put the white on later, but I didn't. But here's the next one. So they kind of taper out like that. I've done better, but I'll show you again. Yeah, kind of like that. As you get towards the back of the fin, the number of spots tapers. And do all your pectoral and pelvic fins and anal fins that way. You can see some vague uniformity to it, but not much. Try to uh, take your time and evenly space them as possible. I mean, you don't want to do shoddy work you can keep from it. So I'm roughly relating to the line below it, but not much. Okay, there's our completed tail. Wouldn't help to have maybe a reference picture if they want to use their particular fish but sometimes they got spots all over, I mean, through the red stripe and everything. A lot of times, there may be some striped, uh, spots in the stripe, but a lot of times not as much. And 
basically what we're doing is like connecting like three dots and making V's and T's and stuff like that. Not too out of out of the way. I mean, almost looks like a spot from a distance. If if that helps any, it probably doesn't. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. And I got my air pressure down real low, of course, and got my paint thinned down real good. I think what I'll do is go ahead and put the spots in and uh, just dots for now because I could always, you know, dress up the spots and make them not look so round right now. But I'm wanting to right now just worry about where my spot placement's going to be and use some reference and then go back later. And I know I'm coming down into the, the red stripe a uh, little past the, uh, little past the uh, dorsal fin and closer to the anal fin. So, and towards the tail, the spots really, just like on a cutthroat or anything, it's like the spots really build up all over on the back of the tail, regardless of the red stripe. Now I'm gonna dress my spots up by connecting other dots to them and making like T's and V's and maybe two. Just gonna mess around and do a few things with the spots. I mean, make them where they're not just round but I don't want to get too carried away. From a distance, they want to look kind of round, like, you know, from a far distance. Well, I'm going to mess with the spots on top, too. To do the same thing, maybe take just a little bit of the roundness out. I like to put several spots together. It's easier for me. That's whatever you figure out. I'll get that done. And you can make spots bigger as little as you think that they ought to be. I probably could have went a little bit smaller on my spots. Okay, this is what I got so far. As you can tell. Yep, this is this is what I got so far. I'm gonna go ahead and darken the back. Like a little bit of darkness on my head. Let your reference be your guy, because they're all different. carried away and you don't want to do it too much. I'm letting angle spray. You hit the lower part of the cheek. The whole part of the heels, let a little bit of angle spray in my work for me. I want to get it on the body. And I don't want him too dark, but I want him. Now, as far as the black, it goes straight up the back. I like to come down kind of like right to the eye. And then it tends to ride up like this and go up. Maybe dip down a little right here. I just let my airbrush take care of that. And straight up the back. stay on top of it and you don't want to do it too harshly either. Enough detail for the pen, it don't take much. I go along the very bottom of the pin, the base of it. Straight up the top of the back, on, right on one side of the spinal cord. And I 
don't want to get too carried away with it. You want it, you want it noticeable? That's about it. That's about it. Depending on how dark the woods are fish. That's about right. I like my fins. That's it. You usually control with this plaque because you can go really too far with it. And I tend to do it a lot to go too far with it a lot. I'm highlighting all the fins, just like I did those, front and the back. about bringing the rays out in the fin is makes it dark. Okay, we need the moderation of black also in the bag color for if I say the back of your fin, the back of your fin stuff that's not going to show. Unless you're doing a two-sided mount or something, which you, know, you can do things a lot different there. Yeah, I had a bad angle uh, trying to get it for the camera, I think, and uh, but this is good, I'll show you this technique. It's like spotting. And it, it brings the fin back out. And if you do it right, you don't even have to try to highlight them in the middle. Basically it's just going in between the spots and we'll, we'll get our gold color back here.
I'm just pin base to the uh, viewer here. Well, here's what I got. Um, now all I gotta do is clean the eye off. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get caught up with the other fish and show you what I've got. Well, you can see where I uh use my black. Well, I bet it once. I'm gonna do it again. The group is in between the gill rays. Well, here's the finished fish. Now all I gotta do is catch up on the other two and I'll show you what I've got. Here's what I come up with on my rainbows. I think they look pretty good. All I gotta do is gloss them. Inside the mouth I put a little bit of, well I had some gill red and uh, put a few drops of black in it. And just to kind of give it a deep red color and I can miss it inside the mouth. Also, I've noticed, and it's in my other trout paint, paint, fish paint schedule that I have. It seems like my medium green, it seems like it lays down better and it's a, it's a better color. It seems like it's a kind of a pretty color to lay my spots on. And it seems like I just control my medium, the intensity of my medium green seems like I control it better. This is gloss top coat. I'm sure you can get inside the mouth. All we're doing is set the paint first. I'm going to go back over with a heavier coat later. Then go back and put a heavier coat on and then you're done. Let it dry for a few minutes. Here's how I paint more than one fish at a time. Uh, in this case, uh, three rainbow trout. Well, this is how I do a reproduction rainbow trout. 